So again, for those of you just joining today's intro webinar, this is Sandra Hess, founder of DTC Wine Workshops. We're going to spend a half an hour together today listening to best practices around winery operations and finance. So without further ado, I'd like to get started by introducing Cynthia. To find information about her background and bio, uh, please visit dtcwineworkshops.com. You'll find the DTC Consultant Network page and Cynthia's bio available for download here. So Cynthia brings just a vast amount of knowledge and industry experience supporting wineries over the past 18 years, really helping them develop an eye for the big picture, working in nearly every aspect of finance, sales, and management. And before she launched her own consulting firm, Bebout Wine Business Management, her past positions included VP of Finance uh, with major companies such as Paul Meyer, uh, trend to do and others. So as she shares her best practices today in our intro webinar, um, make sure to jot down uh, again your questions for the end and we will open it up to the audience. So without further ado, Cynthia, I'm going to go ahead and turn today's presentation over to you. Before I get started today, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself. I've been in the wine business for over 18 years working in Napa, Sonoma, and Mendocino counties for wineries both corporate and family owned. I've also worked in the champagne industry with Laurent Perrier US, the American subsidiary of a French-owned champagne producer. The management positions I've held have ranged from controller, chief operating officer, director of operations, and VP of finance and operations. About two years ago, I decided to go into the consulting business. My passion has always been to help wineries improve their efficiency and streamline their operations. It's very rewarding for me to see the effect those changes make in increased sales and profits. Consulting allows me to work with multiple wineries affecting necessary changes and then continue an ongoing relationship monitoring their financial reporting. Forty years ago, when the U.S. wine industry first began to really make its mark, many wineries were still run by families with a primarily agricultural background. Since then, the business landscape has changed dramatically. Large corporations have moved in and the industry has become fiercely competitive. Business models that were successful in previous decades no longer work when it comes to marketing a product and having a successful bottom line. That's why it's so important to have an organized and structured financial system. There are four key components to the structure. I've prepared and implemented these four keys on many occasions and saw the positive and sometimes dramatic results. The first key is the preparation and utilization of long-term sales and production plan. In the wine business, there's a lag time between the production and sale of a product that can range anywhere from two to three years. Therefore, it's essential that a winery has a sales and production plan that ranges from five to ten years. The factors that influence long-range plans are production and sales. A production-driven plan's primary focus is on what the winery can produce without compromising quality. Factors used are quality fruit availability and winery production and storage capacities. Sales trends are not the focus of these projections. Relying on this type of plan can result in excess inventory or selling out of a product early and in turn losing placements or customer loyalty. For example, in 2005, both Napa and Sonoma County yields were much higher than normal. I worked with a winery that produced a 2005 red blend that's total production was almost double the amount produced in the prior vintage. Unfortunately, the product's 2008 release date was when there was a downturn in the market. The winery was forced to reduce their price and in turn decrease their revenue and overall gross margins. Price reductions also affected brand strategies and the buyer's perception of the product. In contrast, a sales-driven plan uses prior year sales metrics with annual increases. If the annual increases are consistently realistic, the winery has a greater chance of selling out of the product prior 
to the release of the next year's vintage. The problem with focusing on exclusively on sales in a long-term plan is that production levels may exceed the winery's ability to maintain quality due to fruit availability. The solution is to combine both production constraints and sales metrics. The winery owner and finance director should include the winemaker and sales manager in helping create a plan that maintains quality while projecting the timely sale of the products. The second key is knowing the cost to produce each wine. Accurate costing of a, co of a product is complicated and requires attention to detail. Small wineries may not have sufficient accounting staff to handle all the intricate details. They may rely on their CPA to annually cost their wine prior to tax deadlines, which can be very costly. Industry-specific software, if set up correctly, can track costs starting from the purchase of grapes through to the bottling materials used in the finished product. The system may include automatic allocators to spread a portion of administrative and facility costs to each gallon of wine. Those costs are then tracked through to the production and storage of each SKU. Another capability in industry-specific accounting software is the tracking of bottling materials that assigns packaging costs to each specific SKU. During the preparation of their pricing strategies, a winery needs accurate costs to ensure sufficient gross margins. When setting prices, I like to use two rules. In the three-tier channel, never set FOB prices prices and programs that carry a margin of less than 50%. To the direct-to-consumer channel, the retail price, including discounts, should be set to have a minimum of 65% gross margin. Our next key is the preparation of and adherence to an annual budget. Premium wineries are required to age wines one to two years prior to their release date. And this aging process ties up a great deal of capital and inventory. Cash flow constraints occur because of the long lag time from production to sales. Therefore, having a financial plan is essential. For a healthy net income, the company should budget marketing costs in direct ratio to projected company revenue. A well designed marketing plan helps a winery grow sales. But marketing expenses can get out of hand quickly if not monitored. A detailed financial plan can help wineries avoid financial difficulties. The fourth and last key is company sales goals. Wine is sold through three primary channels, three-tier, direct-to-consumer, and export. Allocation is an important tool to ensure sufficient inventory for the winery to meet their sales goals for each channel. Having sales goals for the three-tier system gives the winery sales manager a useful tool in managing the distributors. He or she can provide each state's distributor with annual goals and then monitor their progress throughout the year. In the case of the winery that chooses to allocate wines to each state, if a distributor won't be able to make their goal, they may lose a portion of their allocation. In the direct-to-consumer channel, Sales goals are essential in the creation of an annual direct-to-consumer marketing plan. Direct-to-consumer sales goals also help a winery anticipate cash flow based on release dates and shipment dates. During the projection of sales, the winery needs to plan their percentage of mix for each channel to ensure the healthiest gross margin the winery can attain. In the three-tier system, Price increases from distributors and retailers are by percentage, which means that the prices compound the higher they are. Since small producers generally have a much higher cost of goods, their wines are at a greater disadvantage coming in. Therefore, most small wineries are decreasing their percentage of wine sold to the three tier and increasing their direct to consumer, resulting in a higher overall gross margin. The four keys I've explained work together. The long-term sales and production plan and accurate wine costing are the foundation of the annual budget. In turn, 
the annual budget and the long-term plan are essential in preparing annual sales projections. Therefore, each of these four keys work together to set a winery on a path of financial success. Here is an excellent example of how these four keys work. I mentioned earlier the winery with the large production of the 2005 Red Blend. I started working with them in 2008. The winery had excess inventory and no long-term plan. Over a two-year period, I created a 10-year sales and production plan, implemented systems for accurate costing, developed sales goals and programs by channel, by SKU, to deplete the excess inventory, and created and monitored the annual budgets. By 2011, the winery increased case sales volumes from 16,000 to 30,000 cases and net profits by 54%. Implementing these four keys, as the owner liked to say about winery, right in the ship. As a consultant and also in my management roles, I've had the opportunity to help wineries prepare and implement long-term plans, accurate costing, budgeting, and sales goals. I've seen firsthand what a positive effect they make on the financial health of the company. Also, um, once the, 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 all the processes are comp completed, then um, it's a perfect opportunity for the um, business to turn over, uh, head towards doing a marketing plan. Um, and so that's, that's where Sandra and the direct-to-consumer um, uh, network gets together and they produce a marketing plan. So I'd like to turn this over now to Sandra for question and answer period. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Your information was very concise and I think so helpful for any winery now really looking to grow and expand. I mean, I know that we, we all see what the trends are, you know, the last um, five years as far as significant growth in direct-to-consumer, as far as brand consolidation back to you know, to the larger uh, wineries. And so the distributors, you know, are really, we're seeing some major movement there. So we really appreciate, you know, your insights as we um, continue to evolve in the wine industry. And so with that said, what I'd like to do is make sure that we answer questions that the audience might have um, from today's presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up to audience Q&A. This is your opportunity to ask away. Okay, sounds like a pretty pretty quiet group this morning. But what I'd like to do, Cynthia, is you know, as you wrap up um, the four keys that you presented to uh, success for a healthy winery, I thought were just very concise and, and very spot on. And We'd like to just learn a little bit more about, you know, um, I guess in the last couple of years as you support wineries looking to improve their overall financial health and, and really be able to map out, map out, you know, their goals of using these four tools. What type of investments are you seeing being made in technology? Well, I think primarily businesses are working on making sure that their um, accounting software can handle all the reporting um, necessary to um, to make sure that they have the right metrics for the sales. Um, but also, I, I think that at this point, wineries are are spending a little bit more um, effort with their marketing because there's such a, a fierce uh, competition out there that they have to really um, work towards making sure that they have a very concise marketing plan and also um, because of technology in terms of web um, purchases um, they're spending more uh, effort making sure that their websites are up to date and really functioning you know beautifully there's a lot more competition out there for direct to consumer um, uh, uh, online sales and so that's that's where they're really spending a lot of effort and making sure that their shopping carts are efficient and um, again the uh, being able to capture the metrics they need to make sure that they are targeting their efforts to towards the right market mm -hmm. sure 
I know that right now, looking at your services um, that you provide, you've been, you know, very well versed, obviously, in managing the fiscal activities as, you know, a direct uh, director of operations and working directly at um, various wineries as VP and, and such. But I guess my other question would be around um, accounting software implementation. I know you specialize in AMS and so forth um, and costing programs. Along that line, do you support wineries then who are looking at when it makes sense to outsource things like fulfillment um, based on, you know, production, et cetera? Absolutely. Um, you know, it, with, it, with the integration of software nowadays, um, there, there are so many aspects to, of it, to it that can be integrated. So, for example, in, um, in uh, AMS, uh, you can outsource fulfillment, but still have all the information flow directly in um, to your accounting software. So when shipment happens, it happens automatically. And so outsourcing is much easier now because of the fact that there are so many, um, as I mentioned in, in my presentation, um, uh, industry specific software that can, um, uh, integrate all the processes together and give you, um, very good, uh, accounting records also. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I am excited about the progress I'm seeing in the wine industry as it relates to platforms that are truly integratable, that, you know, we're seeing more and more integration work and customizations to really adapt to the various uh, changes that are happening, both on the um, distributor side of things, as well as the direct to consumer. So I really appreciate you taking time out today to share with us really your best practices, your top four keys for success. And Again, for those of you who have joined today, you can contact Cynthia directly. Um, you'll find her contact information here at the bottom of her bio page. Um, give her a call, send her an email, set up some time for a consultation to better understand how she can support your respective environment. Also, watch for the recording of today's webinar at dtcwineworkshops.com at our recordings webinar recordings page, as well as our social outlets. So again, thank you so much, Cynthia Bebout, for taking time out today to share best practices around winery finance.